Welcome back to our show. My name is Charles. I belong to the New Horizons Toastmasters Club. If you're looking for a club, we invite you. Today on the show, we have Terry Buer. She's with Coggin Water. She's here to share the story or the topic on not all water is equal. Not all water is equal. Terry Buer, welcome to the show. Thank you. Nice to have you. Good to see you in person as we've just been talking on the phone. Yes, it's fun to finally get to meet you. Yes, better in person, yes, I think. Yeah. I think so too. So you belong to which Toastmasters Club? It's the Gresham Toastmasters Club and we meet Wednesday mornings at 6.30. Wow, that's too early. It's an awesome <laughs> time to meet. For all these early risers, we just, it's fun. It's, it's a good way to start your day. Yeah, I bet you it is fun. And we have Deb Hart is in your club mm -hmm. and Bill Johnson. Johnson. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Aurora's in our club. Aurora? Yes. And she's a new member, right? Yes, and she's the gal behind the camera there. I need to ask her, is it a so, good club? And she liking it? Yeah, you, you should ask her for <laughs> sure. I'm sure she'll say yes, because it is you really sure? the best. <laughs> Oh, great. You say, you're sure it's the best? I am sure okay, it's the best. Okay, well, I have to check it out. <laughs> yeah, you should come visit. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I do visit a lot of clubs, so I'll, I'll, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll make a deal. I'll, I'll come and check you out there. Okay. So who is Terry Buer? I grew up in Hawaii. I've lived in Oregon over 30 years. I've lived here so long, I feel like I have web feet. <laughs> and I love it. I love Oregon. Okay, and what do you what do you do for a living? I run a business out of my home. I um, am actually work on educating people about the Congan water. And Congan water is a super hydrating antioxidant um, alkaline water. Great. So we talked on the phone about not all water is equal, and I had looked on your website. I saw one video, it was talking about how that in like I think East, East LA or something like mm -hmm. that, that tap water is not good and I think it's like yellow or brownish. And then I saw another video which is somewhat contrary that uh, was from MSNBC, it was saying that water, tap water is actually better than bottled water, which is surprising. So if you can for us explain how that makes any type of sense, how water is not equal. Well, basically, everybody thinks water is water. Well, I'm here to tell you, all water is not equal. There is tap water. There is bottled water, reverse osmosis water. There's organic acid rainwater. And everybody needs to just, just you know, just do their research and find out what's in their water. For instance, in tap water, it comes from an organic rainwater source. Well, organic rainwater is um, acid. And our government knows that acid water is bad for the city pipes. So hmm. what do they do? They add chemicals to it to balance out the pH. And so when you open the tap, you're getting chlorine, you're getting lye, Mm. And you're getting a lot of other chemicals that the government is going to deem as safe, but is it safe? And every city municipality has their own um, specific uh, chemicals that they add to it. For instance, in Washington, just across the river, they add fluoride to their water. Here in Oregon, we don't. Luckily, we don't. But a lot of people don't even realize fluoride itself is toxic. Mm -hmm. So that's just the tap water. And then we have the bottled water. Well, in bottled water, it's just a really expensive kind of a tap water in the sense that maybe some of it's filtered, maybe it's not. And it's, there's really no regulation. It's bottled at uh, about 185 degrees, and it's bottled in plastic. And, it's, and it sits in those bottles, in those plastic bottles, for probably six to six months to a year before anybody's ever, you know, drinking it. Hmm. And in this period of time, the water's just leaching all the chemicals from the plastic. And then there's filtered water, and yes, you can filter the water, but some, you know, even reverse osmosis water, you're stripping out all the minerals. You're stripping everything out of the water to where as you drink it, it becomes kind of like a mineral drain as it flushes everything through your body. And so to me, in my opinion, the only water to drink 
is a super hydrating antioxidant alkaline water. Hmm. You know, I, I also saw some videos where it was showing different experiments on water. What, what is that all about? I had like a little meter thing to check water. What, what's that about? Well, basically what I do is I educate people about mm -hmm. this water. It's very new. It's been in this country. It originated from Japan and the company brought it in in 2003. So it's been here about 15 years. And people at first did not even understand how important alkalinity is to our health. And it is becoming more um, common knowledge. There's alkaline diets, alkaline drinks, alkaline, you can even get alkaline bottled water. But in the realm of the bottled water, or the waters itself, there's just such a variety of, you know, there's a lot of people that say the same thing, but especially with the bottled waters, they're making a gob of money yeah. for not a whole lot of difference. And so when you, you watch that news article about the tap water and the bottled water, mm -hmm. well, I agree. I mean, the bottled water industry is a trillion dollar industry. And think about it. They're not doing that much to the water. They're putting it in these plastic toxic containers and they're shipping it all over the country and we're spending all this money. It's more than a gallon of gas for the water. And who's getting the money? It's these companies and the water isn't any better. So really, in that regard, tap water is better, but most people, I just think the problem is most people don't understand there is a better choice, and that's what I like to do. And those experiments that people do, I do those in my water demos, and I show people the antioxidant value in the water, I show people the alkalinity, and I show people how it is super hydrated, and they're fun, and people walk away because it's so visual, and they're right there, it's like they can walk away and it does leave an impression on people. I see. We would need we need to have a second part of this so that you can do a demonstration. I, I think that would be really to. really cool. I would love to do a demonstration because yeah, people just don't know it's out there. Great. Well, let's talk about how important water is. I mean, I've I've done a few presentations on uh, health and water always comes up as a topic and I've always taught that you need to have eight glasses of water. Mm -hmm. And what I'm hearing from you, at least from what I see on the site, on your site, is that you need 70 to, or at least our bodies are made of 70 to 75 percent of water. Right. And it seems logical that if we get the right water, that we would be more healthy 70 to 75 percent. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And I think, though, so when I was growing up as a kid, I was told eight glasses of water a day. Mm -hmm. But now everybody is in different size. Would a 250-pound football star need the same amount of water as me, a person who's like maybe 100 pounds? I don't think so, <laughs> you know? So what we tell people is that they need to drink half their body weight in ounces, okay. minimum. Okay, if you're an athlete, if it's a summertime and you're training, at least three quarters of their body weight in ounces. And if you are sick, you have cancer, you have whatever the, you know, Crohn's or whatever disease that your body has, drink at least your body weight in ounces of the super hydrating antioxidant um, alkaline water. Mm -hmm. What, you know, one thing I was just thinking as we were sitting here, um, how, and I think I saw it on the video, but how does like Gatorade and other beverages work in that scenario? I, I would think they're unhealthy, but like what, how could you kind of explain the, the um, you know, drinking these other types of um, drinks, how it would have an impact on your, on your body versus having natural water? Well, in the water demos that I do, I always use Sprite and Sprite is there just to represent the carbonated beverages. Mm -hmm. And so we do a pH test, and of course the Sprite is acid. It's about a 2.5 um, acidity. And we also take the Kangen water and we mix it with all these other bev beverages. Now even the water, like the bottled water that turns out in acid color, if you take the Kangen water and you mix it together, it'll turn, it'll get to be a nice purple 9.5 pH. Great, great. Well, we have a few minutes here. Okay. Uh, how do we stay in contact with you? 
The best way to stay in contact with me is I have a website. It's www.backtooriginwater.com. Well, thank you. Okay. We heard Terry Brewer's life and how water is amazing and how if you have the right water, it will help your health. Uh, we thank her for coming to the show. We thank you for watching the show. I'm Charles Shamer again. Have an awesome, awesome day. Welcome back to the show. My name is Charles Shamry. I belong to New Horizons Toast Masters Club in Tualatin, Oregon. If you're looking for a club, we invite you. And today on the show, we have Bill Johnson. He's here to share his experience in Toast Masters. Bill Johnson, welcome to Charles, the show. It's a pleasure. Yes, thank nice you for have, you here. having me. Yes. Yeah, nice to see you in person. I think we met before here the first time at yes. like an orientation or something mm -hmm. like that a couple of months ago. Yes. And we may have met each other or saw each other at some other meetings or I believe at a contest. Oh, contest yes. maybe? Yes, I think okay. at a contest we have met. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's All been right. some time ago, but yes. Yeah, well nice to see you in person. You belong yes. to which club? Gresham Toastmasters up here on Burnside. And we made it 6.30 in the morning. Oh, that's Bright early. and early. That's yeah. too early for me. Oh, no, no, no. And I hear that you're the best club. I don't know how true that is. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I like New Horizons a lot. So if, if this is the best club, we need to check it out, I think. It is. It is. Early <laughs> birds. Now, how, do, how better can you start your day than with Toastmasters? Yeah. You meet a number of people, same interest. You hear various stories throughout the uh, meeting. What can you be? What, what better can it be? Yeah, and you have a stellar group too. I think Deb Hart belongs to that club, and Terry Buer, yes. which I just met. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you got a good group. It, it looks like we actually have a member who went to the international contest a couple years ago. Wow. Robert, yes, he did not win, but uh, he did place, and yeah, so he's, we have quite the group. Great. So who is Bill Johnson? Oh, a true Oregonian, web feet, moss between my toes. So you're a unicorn, that's what it's called here in Oregon. If you've been originally from here, they call it a unicorn. <laughs> so you don't look like a unicorn? No, I'm missing something. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You Fortunate. look like a bill, actually. You look like oh, a regular you. bill. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so you're originally from here, and you said you have web feet, and, and what oh, else yes. did you want to say that? Well, I've say, uh, always lived in the Portland area. Would uh, I wouldn't know how to live anywhere else. Okay, It'd be terrible to move away. All right, and then what? Um, what's your background? What What, what have you done before, um, as far as work, and what do you do for a living now? Or I, or even hobbies, if if you wish to share. Sure. Well, I can start off with uh, I worked for a corporation for thirty four years, and which corporation? Oh, I work for IBM. Oh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, fortunately, most people within the corporation move around about the country. I was able to stay within, in, within the Portland metro area the whole time for 34 years. Mm -hmm. very, very, felt very fortunate to do that. Very fortunate. As far as hobbies, we enjoy skiing. I work uh, as a volunteer host with the, uh, an extended program of the Ski Patrol at Timberline Lodge. I ride ca captain for the Washington State School for the Blind. We captain tandems where the student is a stoker. It gives them the opportunity to get feel of motion and just the sense of it. It's an awesome program, awesome. Great, and you also do, um, I think you were telling me on the phone, dog? Do you do dog oh yes, we, like uh, we do dog shows. Confirmation, we have Salukis, they're in the hound family. Rather odd breed, but uh, wonderful dogs, and it's a very competitive environment, but fun to be in, fun to be in. Great, and then also too, I think, didn't you tell me you were former military? Yes, that's where I got my education, which okay. allowed me to get a position at IBM many years ago. The, um, the education program within the military is awesome. It is top of the line. And with that education, I interviewed with IBM Corporation and I uh, was able to get a uh, customer engineer position. Gotcha. Well, thank you for your service. Let's talk about your to Toastmaster journey. Sure. How did you hear about Toastmasters? What got you into 
joining and, and being in, in it for 15 years, I think you said, right? Yes, yes, that's about right. Um, when I first started at IBM, I was, I'm very much of an introvert, very quiet, mm -hmm. believe it or not. My manager said, you really need to speak out and speak up. So he put me in the Dale Carnegie course. And let me tell you, yes. I sat in the back room, first couple meetings, quiet, mum, didn't say a word. Before you know it, you're up in front of the group speaking. And after the course completed, I realized that I needed to continue that process and started looking for something and heard about Toastmasters, and here I am. Great. Well, what would you say would be some major improvements that you've gained from Toastmasters? What, did, what have you learned? And, and again, what are some improvements that you've had since you joined the club? Sure. I believe the number one item that I've learned through Toastmasters is to listen. Now, when you think of Toastmasters, you think of public speaking. Before you can speak, you have to listen to know what to speak. So I believe number one is to listen, and definitely Toastmasters has done that. You have to listen to evaluate speeches. You have to listen to understand what the program is for the day. It really, listening is number one. Number two would be speaking. Mm -hmm. And everybody can speak, Right. everybody. But to speak with a limited time frame on a specific topic, it, you, have to, you have to practice, and that's number two, is to stay within a topic uh, for that speech. Right. I think we were talking about before about um, table topics and how that can mm -hmm. improve one's ability to listen uh, mm -hmm. or to, to be a better speaker, and then also the evaluations portion. Can you explain that for the viewers who, who don't know about uh, the processes of Toastmasters? Sure. Table topic is an impromptu speech. It's one minute, 15 seconds to one minute, 45 seconds. There is a table topic master who picks the topics and you may be assigned a topic or you may pick a topic out of a, out of a hat and then you have a minute 15 to a minute 45 seconds to talk about that. You don't have to join in, but you're very welcome to and you, it's surprising what some of the stories are and how funny they are. Evaluation, it requires clear listening. Mm -hmm. Very, you have to very much focus on that speech. And you have to pick the good points and the bad points. And that's part of, table, uh, part of Toastmasters as well, is the ability to give critic, criticism, but in a positive format. And that's something you can learn throughout the process. Great. What was one of the last speeches that you gave? If, if, you, if you can think of some some of the last speeches that you've you've given, um, what um, what was the topic of that speech? Oh, I gave one. Um, my mind is blank. No, that's fine. I mean, I guess you were prepared for that. But no, I was not. Okay. Um, well, from our last, from your last um, Toastmasters uh, meeting, um, did you have any roles that you presented at the club? No, this last Toastmaster meeting, I did not have a role. But I do remember my last speech I gave was a humorous speech. Okay, great. And um, you know, the point is not to make laughter throughout the speech, but is to make a point with your laughter, mm -hmm. with your humor. And okay. I cannot remember what it was specifically. Okay. Wow. Well, that's humorous that you don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes me uncomfortable that I don't remember. <laughs> okay. Well, it's okay. That's okay. Uh, well, wrapping up here, um, how do we stay in contact with you? The best way to stay in contact is through my real estate site, I work for John L. Scott and Sandy, and my I text very much all the time. And my phone number is on that website, and that's probably the easiest way to stay in touch with me or be in contact with me. Before we go, what um, how has it helped you? Because you, you talked about real estate, um, has it helped you with the real estate game? Oh yes. Um, when people are buying or selling a property, it's a very stressful very stressful process either way. And, it, and again, Toastmaster has taught me to listen 
to what the concerns are of that family or person. Without that skill set, my the uh, success of real estate would be much less because you have to understand why that person is nervous and then take that into effect and calm them down mm -hmm. through other types of conversation, other paths. Good, well, good. Well, we thank you for coming to the show. You heard uh, Bill Johnson, his life, his story, and how his uh, Toastmaster skills has allowed him to be a better listener and how it's helped him at his work as far as uh, real estate goes. Uh, we thank him for coming to the show. We thank you for watching the show. I'm Charles Chambry again. Have an awesome, awesome day. Hi, I'm James Wants. I'm the current public relations manager for District 7, but I'm also a member of three Toastmasters clubs. I've been involved in the district since about 2008, so I'm pretty familiar with the legacy educational system that we have. So when Pathways rolled out, I decided I wanted to dive in because Pathways, well, it's brand new. It's something I hadn't encountered before. Now, many of us who have been in Toastmasters for a while, we know about the two tracks, the communications track and the leadership track, the competent communicator manual, the competent leadership manual, and they both lead forward and meet in the distinguished Toastmasters. But with Pathways, there were 10 different individual paths that I could choose from. That, 10, that's, that's five times as many as the two tracks that I had previously. I'd heard a little bit about some of the projects that were inside of these tracks, and I immediately got excited. When the ambassador at our spring conference started talking about all of these potential projects that we could do, electives like creating a podcast, or writing a compelling blog, or attending a networking event. Oh, okay, I didn't really like that one. I hate networking. Ugh. But the fact that I could do these projects, which hadn't been a part of Toastmasters, at least in my experience up to that point, kind of got me fired up for the new program. So when Pathways came out, I dove in. Now, I have a history of, uh, well, theater. You may not be able to tell. I enjoy presentations, so I decided my first path was going to be presentation mastery because I was going to dive into something new with something familiar. And so I went into Pathways for the very first time, looked at the project, started working through presentation mastery, and found a bunch of really cool nuggets, these golden nuggets embedded in the projects as I'm going. As I said, I've been a member since 2008, but I had yet to encounter within Toastmasters the idea that you could do a speech and then do the speech over again. I mean, I'd encountered it, yeah, other people had mentioned it, but now within Pathways, that's one of the first projects you do. You do a speech, you get evaluation on that speech, you then incorporate the evaluation into the speech, and you give the same speech again. I mean, it's, it's mind-blowing, because up until this point, at least a year for me in Toastmasters, I thought that once I gave a speech, it was gone. I couldn't do that speech again. Now, this comes from my theater background, because you do a performance and it's over. So I thought it was the same. You do a speech and it's over. But that, that's not really what happens. I mean, within our own professional lives and, and presentations and our work days, oftentimes I've encountered people that give presentations over and over and over and over. So now that has become an integral part of Pathways. And that's just, that's just one of those nuggets that I found. As I'm working through presentation mastery, I started to get the sneaking suspicion that I was cheating myself. I was cheating myself because I wasn't really challenging myself in all the areas that I could challenge myself. Yeah, networking. I hate it. But you know, there is a specific path that deals with networking, strategic relationships. I decided that if I was going to be a Pathways evangelist and talk about how good it was for helping people conquer communication and leadership in their own life, I needed to do something that was uncomfortable for me. So I signed up for the, the strategic relationships. And yes, I am going to attend networking events. 
I am going to find out about those strange things they call networking events. And then, as per the project in Pathways, I'm going to go back to my home club and report how scared I was at the time. Because stepping up in front of people to give a presentation doesn't bother me. I enjoy it. I know I'm weird in that way. But if you put me in a room where I have to network with people, I, 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 it's just amazing. I challenge you. Figure out what you want to work on in your life. And then go to Toastmasters.org. Look into Pathways. Start figuring out one of those 10 individual paths that would challenge you. Or if you want, start with something familiar. But the key part of this whole thing is start into the Pathways journey. Because you don't know what you're going to find. And I think you're going to really like it in the process. Toastmasters.org. I joined Toastmasters to improve my speaking, listening, communication, and leadership skills. Toastmasters gave me incredible confidence. 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 Great listening skills. Poise. Great leadership skills. Leadership skills. The ability to speak in public. Strength. A captive audience. Quality feedback from the more experienced Toastmasters. Toastmasters really helped me improve my listening skills. Sales skills opportunities to go to different groups and widen my whole horizon. Toastmasters has given me a better, a more focused me, and I'm a much better listener. Toastmasters is fulfilling. It's a great place to fail your way to success. Wonderful way to meet people. Networking. Strength. It's addictive. It's a club of self-improvement. It's an experience, it's a ride that you won't forget and you'll enjoy it every step of the way. Toastmasters helped me land a kick butt job. I sang at one of my table topic speeches and people liked it and applauded. My business is doing great and I'm very, very grateful to Toastmasters. It's been a great experience for me. Thank you, Toastmasters. Thank you, Toastmasters. Thank you, Toastmasters, for giving me so much confidence. Thank you, Toastmasters, for everything.